In life, in love, and in medicine, ideally, sana, dapat, there are no accidents. Off the bat, right now, we would like you to unlearn the concept of the so-called accident-prone individual or child. Walang bad luck. Walang bad day. No accidents. Accidents in a calculated medical perspective, in reality, are caused by haste, distractions, or lapses in judgment or supervision. It results in the absence of or an awareness of safety measures in high-risk situations. So, the proper title for today's lecture should be Injury Prevention. Good afternoon. International data summarizes that injuries are the most common cause of death beyond the first few months of life. The statistics are led by falls, motor vehicle related injuries, and poisoning. They also lead to a significant loss of life and limb, use of medical resources, and long term burdens that infants, children, or teens and their families will carry on until they turn into adults. The identification of risk factors for injuries is key in the development of successful programs for injury control and prevention. And consists of the three-pronged classic doctrines of preventive medicine, primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. It is important to identify risk factors. Age, the still evolving developmental milestones, poor judgment skills, and lack of awareness of risk represent a window of vulnerability. Our young patients still do not understand the hazards of playing with a plastic bag or remaining submerged in a bathtub. Parents expect children to get home from school alone when they can actually only safely maneuver traffic at major roads at age 9 or 10 years. Certainly, a baby does not come with an instruction manual, but it is our job as medical personnel to augment parenting advice with age-specific anticipatory guidelines, even when a patient is seen only for a non-injury-related consult. Our approach should be holistic and preventive. For younger patients, note the advice on tap or bath water caution. For school children, road safety. For teens, alcohol. And across all ages, firearm and driver safety. The male gender with their adventure-seeking behaviors and on the other hand, cultural minority and poverty are all innate risk factors that are really difficult to modify. In this regard and in many others, modifying the product design is a more practical approach that is easier to implement. For instance, child-resistant caps, airbags, and car seats, or fire-safe cigarettes, versus environmental modification and education. This is our injury topic overview. Focusing on vehicular accidents, Philippine data show that numbers of deaths have been increasing due to road incidents over the last few years. Many of the fatalities are actually children. This is despite the presence of clearly laid out traffic road rules. Perhaps the law needs a little bit more force or the implementation is insufficient and even we ourselves are pasaway. As with issues, thanks to this administration, change is also coming. Dashboards in vehicles are now clearer and uncluttered thanks to the anti-distracted driving law. Safety features are going to be upgraded in our public transports through the Jeepney Modernization Act, and the dash cam law requires all vehicles to have a CCTV or black box, especially in public ones. According to studies though, proper restraint use in vehicles is still the single most effective method for preventing serious or fatal injury as a car occupant. Teens must use seat belts and car seats if younger. 
and this is adjusted for the age, weight, and height. This should be located in the back seat and must be used until age 8 or until he or she reaches a height of 4'9". It should be rare facing in infants due to the fragile nature of their cervical spine and lack of head support. The latest law on passenger safety encourages CRS or child restraint systems which include safety belts, and car infant seats. Unfortunately, in the country and even in the locality, this is never a common practice. It is a privilege reserved to the rich and safety conscious parents. This law also mandates that it is a violation to leave children inside cars without adult supervision and that children less than 12 should not be allowed to sit in the front seat. Some common knowledge that can be easily understood and taught. Being seated at the back seat is safer versus than in the front, but not at the rear end of a truck, pickup, or jeep. Airbags are safe for adults, but for children, it can be more injurious. That is why children below 12 should not be allowed to sit in front. Smaller cars are riskier, and more passengers distract the driver and promote more incidents of road crashes, but traveling alone is a risk for sleeping at the wheel for solo or night drivers. A driver is now prohibited from texting, watching movies, or making non-emergent calls, and it is best practice to never drink and drive no matter how little. For the child pedestrian, it is best to teach them early how to cross the road safely but take note only at the age of 9 or 10 will a child be developmentally ready for this. Let's also tell them that even if they are crossing a pedestrian lane, maintain vigilance and always be alert. Fortunately, in Baguio, pedestrians are not allowed to use earphones or text on the road. Firearm-related injuries The use of guns is becoming increasingly common as a means of suicide as well as mass casualties. We know all too well the bitter stories of random shootings within schools, particularly in the U.S. Or the great school student who brings his father's gun to school and accidentally kills a classmate. After all the studies have been analyzed, it is absolutely better to not allow individuals personal licensing for gun ownership no matter the circumstances. Owning of a gun at home increases the risk of adolescent suicide by 3 to 10 fold and homicide by up to 4 fold. As the summer approaches and people gather at water recreation areas, parents have to exercise vigilance. Pools, open waters, Ditches, bathtubs, and even small pails all pose risks for drowning. Babies should also not be allowed to swim. Not until age 4, according to the AAP, children below age 5 do not also understand the consequences of falling into deep water and usually do not call for help even when drowning. In residential and resort pools, choose one with circumferential fencing with closable gates so that children will not go there unsupervised. Avoid alcohol as it will inevitably lead to blunted senses and common sense. Wear personal flotation devices when riding a boat or in open water. In drowning, the entry of water into the mouth and throat causes laryngospasm and our response is to hold our breath. This can lead to hypoxia, loss of consciousness, and bradycardia. The reflex to breathe in is triggered later, hence leading to aspiration. Inhaled water, even as small as 1 to 3 ml, deactivates lung surfactant and this can cause the lungs to collapse. Diving injuries are also quite serious and can lead to spinal cord injuries. One recent and difficult to approach issue is violence and bullying. Luckily, awareness for it has been increasing over the years and schools approach it more openly. 
The principle of the circle of violence urges us to look, though, beyond the school situation of the bully, but also the parents and the home situation. Maybe the bully is being bullied too. Is domestic violence a problem at home? It is definitely not an issue to ignore as these can be carried on well into adulthood. Our references cite its general principles for the treatment of bullying. If, despite our efforts to prevent injuries, they still do, our health facility should be there and ready to address them. This is the essence of secondary prevention, timely referral and treatment in specialty centers as well as tertiary prevention of long-term sequela with rehabilitation facilities and psychiatric care when necessary.